Do you remember when it was really hard to deploy static sites to the cloud? Like I'm talking about before Vercel and Netlify and others became a thing. Like to build a static site, deploy it to like CDN nodes across the world and serve them in a fast way, it was, was a hard problem. And then what happened was platforms like Vercel, Netlify, others, in a way brought the cloud down. Like they made this stuff quite trivial for developers. Like today, if I want to deploy a static site to Netlify, I just drag and drop a folder and it's live. We feel like databases haven't gotten the same love, right? Like, like bear with me. So say you're starting something like a job board um, and you decide, okay, I'm starting a site like LinkedIn or Indeed or something and I need a database. Hmm. What kind of database do I choose? Do I choose a document store like MongoDB? Do I choose something with SQL and a bit more structure? Complexity. Um, let's, okay, let's just say we choose something with SQL. Um, and really, a good part of system design is thinking about, okay, how is this going to scale over time? Like if, if we have millions, billions of users, what's our story? How do we manage the scale and the complexity at that scale? So as we grow, um, you would probably want to scale vertically. You'd probably like throw more RAM at it, more disk space, so you, you, you'd scale up that way. Um, but at some point, you'd want to scale out. You'd want to scale horizontally. You'd, you'd want to have, if it's a job board, you'd be quite read heavy, right? People would be reading job posts a lot more than adding job posts. So you'd probably have some type of read replication story. With Postgres, you can do that. You can have like multiple read replicas, um, and data is like propagated between them and so on, but that gets complex. As you grow, you would probably need um, some type of in-memory key value store. Why? Well, because reading to and writing from, reading from and writing to disk is usually slow. Uh, it's slower than reading from and writing to RAM or memory. And so you would need some type of like Redis or something in front of your database. So when your app get requests data, it first gets it from Redis, but if there's a cache miss, then it Redis gets it from your database and keeps it in its cache for next time and subsequent things get faster, but complexity. Um, if you're a job board, <laughs> you, you probably need a search engine. Like, like people want, if you need to, if you're searching for like TypeScript jobs, right? You, you'd want to type TypeScript and have a search engine deliver you results. But then if we add a search engine to this, you would have to have some way of like replicating data from your database into the search engine. So you'd need some type of like queue. You need like Kafka or something so that when data gets written into your database, it also replicates in the search engine. So that's complex. There's quite a bit of complexity if you want to build an app at any arbitrary reasonable scale today. Um, at Zada, we're saying, hey, maybe this complexity doesn't need to exist. Maybe we can make the developer experience around this more approachable to everybody. So anybody wanting to start a job board, uh, starts a job board and focuses on the job board and doesn't have to worry about database or database complexity or data infrastructure complexity. So um, the goal really is to give developers such amazing developer experience that these things aren't really something they or we worry about. You just kind of give it data, it does its thing, you get a search engine out of the box, you get analytics out of the box, and so on and so forth. Um, to, I'd love to show you that if you have a minute. Um, so if we look over here on the screen, what we see is workspaces. And workspaces, uh, workspaces in Zada are similar to like orgs in GitHub or teams in like Netlify and Vercel. So we create a workspace for our company called Acme. Um, classic. And what we do is we'd add a database. In this case, we'd say jobs. Um, and this contains the database for our job board. What we can do then is if we go to our schema, we can define a schema, a structure for our database. So obviously we'd need jobs in here. Um, a job would have, for example, a title, that's a string, and maybe a description, that's a longer one, right? Maybe even a number for you know, salary, maybe. Um, okay, so we have that, but then jobs, one job would usually have multiple applications. So we can add another table called applications. Um, and we'd need some way to link applications to jobs. So what we can do is say this application is a link 
to jobs. So I'll add a column called jobs and I'll just do a link here. And what we can see is now these are, these are connected. And of course, applications also have some data like, like name of the applicant and so on. <laughs> name. We'll do email. Um, yeah, so we have a database, we have a schema and it's, it's ready to go. So let's insert some data. So I'll add a job. I will call it um, senior, senior database engineer. Um, and the description is must be amazing. Salary is 100,000 of something, Bitcoin. <laughs> um, so I have this. And so now if we want to add an application for this job, we just add a record here. We can choose which job. And this is something, of course, our app will do for us as people fill out forms. The name is mine and the email is that, right? So we have data, we, we have, but how do we now query this? Um, so if I go to jobs, I can actually filter this, I can sort it, I can do all kinds of things and the view updates here. But what I can do at some point is I can get a code snippet and in this case, JavaScript, I can copy the snippet and in any Node.js backend or something, I can paste it and I have the data as expected. I can also curl this, I can do other things and so on. So like, we don't have to think about, okay, we Postgres, Mongo, we don't have to think about hosting it, we don't have to think about a lot of things. We get a database, we define a schema, we put data in, we get data out, bada bing, bada boom, my app is ready. Um, so that's like the surface of, of, of how we're tackling this problem. But we also want to make the problem go away like later. Because as your job board grows, you're going to want to change the structure of your data. You're going to want to update your schema in some way. I'm talking about migrations. Uh, and database migrations historically have been super hard. Like how do you write them? Where do you write them? How do you test them? How do you run them. At, at some scale level, running database migrations becomes really hard slash problematic because they sometimes require like exclusive locks. So if you're updating your schema and you're running a migration, you can't like write stuff to your database. Can you imagine? Like you'd have to have downtime and it's hard to navigate if you have a ton of users and complexity. Moreover, how do you like orchestrate migrations around code changes? Like if you add something to your schema that code depends on, do you deploy the code first? Do you make the migration first? Complex, it's just hard. Migrations are a hard problem. They're like deploying static sites before Vercel and Netlify were a thing. Um, at Zara, we're, we're trying to make that problem go away too. And I'd love to show you that. So if you look over here on the screen, um, we just ran the code snippet. There's this thing called branches, right? Uh, we're, we're probably not the first to come up with database branches, but we definitely want to focus on amazing developer experience around database branches. So if you go to branches, we can create another branch and I'll call it, let's say I want to change my, my, my schema and add pronouns to the applicants, to the job application. So I'll call it pronouns and I'll create it. Um, and just like that, my database now has a variant in time, a branched version of itself where I can go and update the schema. So if I go back to my database and I go to the pronouns branch here, you'll notice that there is no data. The data isn't copied between branches for security. Uh, we, we care about production security and you really don't want to replicate that across branches, especially not like personally identifiable information or PII. Anyway, so we're looking here at the pronouns branch and I can go to this applications table or I can actually just in enjoy the schema view here and add a column called pronouns, pronouns, right? And I can say it's a string. And so now if we compare branches, the pronouns branch has that, whereas the main branch, if I go to the schema view, does not. And so I can verify that this structure kind of works. I can even insert data if I want to. I can query the data using this get code snippet and make sure that the schema works in my app before then opening a merge request having my team review it kind of like you do in GitHub at the database level and then merge it. When I merge it, a migration is run, but this migration is a zero downtime migration, meaning it, it doesn't lock up your database. Your users can still use it. It's, there, there is no downtime. There's no need for a maintenance window. Um, and also it's a rolling deployment, meaning when you merge it, there's for a period of time, two versions of the schema before and after available. 
And if you use the Zata API to interact with the database, if you send something from the old schema, it will just translate it to the new schema in real time. So, so it's a rolling deployment. You don't have to worry about, oh, which version am I talking to um, while the migration is happening. So we really want to make these database problems go away. And so far, we are. Uh, and so how do, you, how do you get involved? Well, we are a closed beta. Uh, so the name of the game is you go to zada.io, you can request beta access. And if you have a use case that needs it today, we can, we can make that happen. Um, you can also familiarize yourself with here. If, if we look at our docs, docs.zeta.ia, this is public. You can look at it. You can look at our REST API and see what you can do and so on. And there's a really nice guide of like the things you would do most commonly with a database. Um, that we're, we're really excited to make databases fun, safe, and predictable. One last way we're making databases, I'd say more approachable to Jamstack and general software developers is working with production data. Like if you work with production data today, you're probably having to like SSH into something and use a CLI against production data, which may be unsafe. Maybe you enter Vim and you can't get out of it or something. Um, as we showed you with Zeta, it's a spreadsheet-like UI. Um, you, can, you can edit it there if you want, or you could even uh, say, hey, production is read-only, but let's make a branch and tweak things as needed. The name of the game is safety comfort and predictable, reliable developer experience at arbitrary scale as your startup needs, as your company needs. Uh, and with that, I want to say thank you so much for, for watching. And I hope this helps you kind of understand what we're doing at Zada. If you'd like to get started, as I said, Zada.io and we're hiring. So if you want to join us, Zada.io slash careers. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Um, that's been it. And we'll catch you sometime soon. Peace.